Welcome back everybody. We're going to do another dynamics problem and this what this one says a parachute is having a mass m opens its parachute from an at rest position at a very high altitude. If the drag resistance follows this equation where k is a constant, determine the velocity when he has fallen for a time t. What is his velocity when he lands on the ground? So the very first thing we're going to do is draw the free body diagram and I'm going to define our axes as this as always, so right to the right is positive, up is positive, and we can draw the free body diagram. So we're going to define, I'm going to define the parachutist as just a, a circle to uh, simplify the drawing. And the only forces acting on this parachutist is going to be the weight of the parachutist, and uh, because he has some mass m, and then there's going to be a drag force pulling upward. Um, due to the shape or the fluid uh, he is falling in. So we could say F at D is going upward and that follows this equation here. So now that we have that, all we have to do is sum the forces in the, uh, in the positive y direction because there's no movement in the x direction. We're assuming that the parachutist is falling straight downward so we don't have to worry about any um, angles of these forces. So we could say that the sum of the forces in the y direction, where we're going to define up as positive, is going to equal Fd minus W, and that's going to be the mass of the parachutist times A, and A is just the acceleration in the y direction. So from there, I'm going to rewrite this equation in terms of Fd, so it's going to be Kv squared minus Mg equals Ma. So again, we know that A can be rewritten as a derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we're going to say that A equals dv dt. So now that we have that, we can move around these variables so we could take the integral. So what we're going to do is move this equation over here and move dt over there. So what we'll get is going to be dt equals m over kv squared minus mg times dv and we can take the integral of that and to define our limits of integration we were told um, the parachutist starts from rest so we could say that the initial velocity is going to be zero and its final velocity is going to be some final velocity we'll call vf and then we, are, we, we could start the time right when the parachutist starts falling. So we'll define that initial time as zero. And then the total time traveled is going to be some value of t. So we, they defined it as t, lowercase t like that. So we'll use the same notation. So to make this equation a little nicer, we're going to factor out an m over k to make this a little bit nicer. So we're going to say that this time, so when you integrate this side, it's just going to equal t. And then we're going to have, we're going to factor out m over k like that. So it's going to be 0 to v final. And what we'll get is dv over v squared minus m over k times g. So if you redistribute or redistribute this variable into this equation right here, we'll get this right here. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that we could easily use partial fraction decomposition. So before we can do that, we're going to redefine this part of the equation. So we're going to say alpha squared equals m over kg. And the reason why is what we'll get is a difference of two squares, which we'll be able to factor out and create a partial fraction decomposition. So we'll see what we can do. So we're going to say that t equals m over k from 0 to v final dv over v squared minus alpha squared. So now that we have that, we could do some partial fraction decomposition, which wouldn't be too, which won't be too difficult. So we're going to take out this part of the equation and actually analyze that part and see what we can do with it. So we could say that 1 over v squared minus alpha squared can be decomposed into its factors. So we could say v plus alpha plus v minus alpha. And we could define these constants a and b. So whatever values that these uh, a and b take is going to satisfy this uh, fraction right here. So all we have to simply do to make this uh, equation true is multiply by the 
the other factor on each side. So we could say V minus alpha, V minus alpha, and this is going to be V plus alpha, and this is going to be V plus alpha. So by that we could say this, uh, we could say that the numerator is equal to each other, so we could say A, V minus alpha, plus B, V plus alpha. So to simply solve for these variables A and B, all we have to do is set a value for V um, so that this A cancels out or this B cancels out. So we're going to let um, V equal alpha. So if that's true, what's, that, what's going to happen is that 1 equals B um, times alpha plus alpha, which is 2B alpha. So we could say that B actually equals 1 over 2 alpha. And by that same logic, we could say that we could let uh, V equal neg negative alpha so that B cancels out. So what we get is going to be 1 equals A minus alpha minus alpha, which is negative 2A alpha. So we could say that A equals negative 1 over 2 alpha. So now that we decompose this part of the equation, we could actually write it in terms of this uh, equation right here, these brown, yellowish uh, fractions. So we could say T, the total time, equals m over k from 0 to v final and then we decompose the fraction so we get 1 over 2 alpha over v plus alpha plus 1 over 2 alpha and that's going to be v over minus alpha and then this whole thing is being multiplied by dv so now what i'm going to do is factor out this 1 over 2 alpha so we get t um, m over k to alpha integral from 0 to v final and that's going to be 1 over v minus alpha minus 1 over v plus alpha and that's going to be dv. So now that we have that we can actually take the integral of these bad boys so we could say that t equals m over 2k alpha and the integral of this is going to be the ln of absolute value of v minus alpha minus the ln of v plus alpha and all this is evaluated from 0 to v final so by using our logarithmic properties what we can do is simplify this a little bit further so we could say that this is going to be ln of the quotient of v minus alpha over v plus alpha and we could evaluate that from 0 to v final. So let's plug those values in. So we get is t equals m2k alpha ln of v final minus alpha over v final plus alpha, and that's going to minus ln, and then this is going to be 0. So this is going to be negative alpha over alpha, so that's just negative 1. And again, these are absolute value signs. So that'll be that, and then this is going to be that. So this actually goes to zero, so all we're left with is this quotient. So we can say that t, the total time, will get you this, tk alpha times the ln of vf minus alpha over vf plus alpha. So from there, all we have to do is solve for v final, which shouldn't be too difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this constant and move it on this side. So we're going to say 2k alpha over m times t is going to equal ln of vf minus alpha over vf plus alpha. And now we're going to e both sides. So what we get is e 2k alpha over m times t equals um, equals vf minus alpha over vf plus alpha. So now I'm going to move this onto the other side. So what we're going to get, let me change the color. So what we're going to get is going to be e2k alpha over m times t times vf plus alpha e2k alpha over m times t. That's going to equal v final minus alpha. So I'm going to collect like terms for vf, subtract this over here and move this alpha over here. So we're going to alpha plus alpha e 
2k alpha over m times t equals vf times, I'm already going to factor out this vf, so that what we'll get is the vf 1 minus e 2k alpha over m times t. So then we can define the final velocity vf as alpha plus alpha e to the 2k alpha mt divided by 1 minus e 2k alpha over m times t. And that's what's going to be the final velocity where alpha squared equals mg over k which implies that alpha is this radical, so we could say that mg over k square rooted. So this right here is the final answer. Our final velocity is determined by this equation where time starts from right when the parachutist falls right here, and this is some time later, so t equals t. So this is the equation that you get. So let me quickly go over what we just did, although this, cal this problem was mostly a calculus problem. So the very first thing we did was uh, draw the free body diagram and defined our axes, which way is positive. So we summed the forces in the y direction. We got the drag going upward and the weight force pointing downward. And we defined the acceleration uh, times mass, which equals the sum of the forces in the y direction. So from there, we recognize that acceleration can be uh, rewritten as the derivative velocity with respect to time. And from there, we separated the differentials, took the integrals with respect, to, uh, with respect to the limits of integration, which was from zero to time t, where zero is the point where the parachute starts falling from rest. And we define uh, t as the total time elapsed from the parachute is falling. And then we also define uh, zero as the initial velocity because again the parachute is, was falling from rest and we define some arbitrary final velocity as v final. So from there uh, we took the integral and we recognize this equation and what we did was actually set this constant equal to alpha squared so that allows us to recognize that this is a difference between two squares, which will allow us to break up that, that uh, fraction into two fractions by its factors, and we could do partial fraction decomposition. And then from there, we found the values for A and B to satisfy this partial fraction decomposition. So then we, we re-plug that, uh, that, that partial fraction decomposition into the integral, and we simplified it a little bit further. Then we finally took the integral of it and used some logarithmic properties to simplify it even further. And what we got was this is the total time after um, it has traveled some, some distance and acquired some final velocity. We could see how, how long that takes. And then from there, we simplified it even further to solve for the final velocity. So for the final velocity, all we had to do was isolate Vf, which what we did was um, move this constant to, to this side, and then we eed both sides, and then from there we distribute this denominator to this side of the equation, and then we further uh, collected like terms Vf, and then factor out Vf to get 1 minus this junk. And then from there, all we did was divide this stuff by this stuff, and this will give you the equation of the final velocity after some given time, where alpha is this arbitrary constant related to mass of the parachute and gravity times the, co uh, the coefficient of drag. And we use that in this equation so that we can have some final velocity after some given time. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I know the math is so convoluted, but if you follow this, you should be well more than prepared for any dynamics exam in terms of the calculus, of course. So uh, that's it. Hopefully this helped you. There'll be more dynamics problems in the future.